everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Graveyard Shift. We are week two in to our year three, and we are going to be returning to Internet Horror. And on this episode, we have... Uh, hi, it's me, Emily. You may know me from... Uh, I've been on this show uh, maybe once or perhaps twice. What's up? I'm Chris. Uh, you've probably seen me on some other episodes of The Graveyard Shift from the past couple years, and then just sprinkled through in a couple of episodes here and there. Mm-hmm. You were on every single Graveyard Shift episode year one, and you never watched <laughs> yes. a single horror film. To be fair, I watched clips and read synopsises. I can't watch horror, okay? Unless you would like me to pass out in the middle of a movie. <laughs> this was an interesting choice of episode. <laughs> <laughs> and at horror, I just read, and reading is perfectly fine. No, that's that's fair. That's That's actually reasonable. Ah, uh, yes, well, because the imagination is far less scarier than the actual thing. I don't know. Yes. I mean, part of it is also that a lot of internet horror is, like, not nearly as well-constructed. Some of it is. But, like, I, you know, I used to read creepypastas as, like, a middle schooler. Oh, and... God, you did a middle school creepypasta phase, too? Yeah, yeah of course. Oh, like, my God. It was crazy because we would trade them around on the playground like fucking silly bands. Like it'd be like shit. And you heard this 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 one and then we like recount them to each other. It was weird as shit, but I was the only one. I was the only one at my school. So I was very quietly... isolated. <laughs> I was very isolated as a child, okay. I went to a Catholic school. <laughs> Chris, this isn't childhood trauma. This is internet horror. <laughs> okay, Get back on topic. Link, though. <laughs> Should we do, so do, a, we should we do a childhood trauma next year? <laughs> <laughs> just hour long event session. Oh man, I don't know if that would be bad or really fun. It, put it in the comments if you want to see that. All right, do we just want to go down the list? Sure. Uh, I know we talked about this briefly last year, but I didn't know much about it and like what it actually is, like the SCP Foundation. But we never really talked about specifics of the SCP Foundation. So if you guys have any like specific stories or creatures you want to talk about, that would be cool. Or if you want to talk about what you think your interpretation of what the SCP is, I'd be interested to hear it. I mean, for me, SCP is very cool. But it's also like a creative writing thing. A lot of creative writing can like be put into tropes. And like obviously there's going to be some tropes throughout the SCPs. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they kind of break tropes, and it's just like, yippee, it's a little different than what we normally see. <laughs> like, oh god, what's the SCP's name that's like a doll, and if you look away from it, it just snaps your neck? Which SCP is that? Oh, I'm I'm familiar with that one. Is that 706, maybe? It's maybe no, not. SCP-173, which... So basically, that's like the weeping angels from Doctor Who. If you are looking at it, it doesn't move. The moment you break line of sight, blinking or anything, it moves really fast. Typically, snaps the neck. Okay, from last year, from what I remember, is I remember being told that a lot of SCPs are like that. Like They're like weeping angels, but this. Like, you look away, and when when you look back, they're closer. So I'm like, is, is that just like an ongoing theme with that? Kinda, yeah. You also have, like, SCP-96, which is Shy Guy. From Mario? No. Same name, totally different creature. Okay. So, basically, Shy Guy is, like, you can't look at his face, you can't look at a picture, you can't look at a very accurate drawing. Like, if you look at his face, he just, like, teleports near you and will do everything in his power to kill you. Because he's like, you've seen my face? die wait if you're looking at his face and he's right there how does he teleport to you well also if you well, look at a photo or a hyper realistic drawing max i'm just saying like it's not that impressive if like i just look at your face and you're there like oh shit you're already there Ooh. <laughs> i'm yeah. just saying like not that impressive <laughs> i mean also it's not like an actual person it's all right and it's actually really funny and like one of the scp foundation games or, like, they have a machine where you can, like, change the level of things. Mm-hmm. Like, you put a clearance card in, it becomes a higher level clearance card. But if you put a picture frame in, it gives you a picture of this guy, and he immediately spawns and kills you. Kind of sounds like a break in security. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah. Honestly, the this SCP foundation doesn't foundation. seem that safe. Not. Consistently across their lore, one of the few consistent things about the SCP Foundation is they're fucking shit at doing the things that they're trying to do. <laughs> uh, also, uh, the SCP Foundation is not afraid of using humans. Uh, I can't remember what they're called, what their lowest class is, but it's like basically condemned criminals. They use them as like workers. So that way, like no ordinary citizen gets hurt. So like they'll send like three in to like clean around SCP-173. Because, oh, also says SCP-173, he like shits everywhere. It's a clay doll, but somehow it secretes it everywhere. And okay. so then they send three guys in to clean it, you know, to try and keep it clean. And one of them is constantly looking at it. Or they all like take turns blinking and all that. But like people will fuck up. And then all three will end up with snapped necks. <laughs> If you could capture these things, why don't you, I don't know, kill it? Or, I don't know, maybe do some Suicide Squad shit, put bombs in their necks and be like, send a picture of this demon to, I don't know, Netanyahu, <laughs> and take care of that. I don't know, Suicide Squad this shit. Come on. Editors I know mean, million dollars. I'm pretty sure they've been tried. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I don't think PETA gives a shit about fucking... Slender Man over here. I don't know. PETA seems to care for all subsentient beings, so maybe maybe they'd have issues with like deploying Slender Man in in international warfare. <laughs> I I wouldn't personally. <laughs> if my understanding is correct, a lot of the SCPs are also like really weird and esoteric. Like I, I feel like a lot of people wrote ones that are just very strange and abstract. Oh, also, there's like like some are they're just like humans with weird powers, so they're not necessarily dangerous. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is bombs in the neck <laughs> and set up a i don't know a squad that likes to doesn't really care about if they live or die <laughs> i feel like you're really I'm... attached to the suicide squad idea and i i straight up do not think it would work <laughs> just saying <laughs> oh the fountain of youth is considered one wait yeah so they also take stuff from like legends and stuff and put them in as the scp foundation it's like all like folklore type shit oh okay yeah, so, like, the, I'm looking at... Ser oh, also, there's different series. <laughs> On, like, the official website, there's SCP by series, and, like, each one has, like, 999 entries. I don't know. When I imagine this thing, I'm not really imagining anymore what, like, the Suicide Squad, like, Bell Reef prison looks like. I'm more imagining, like, that facility from Monsters vs. Aliens. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's, my That's pretty God. similar. Hey, 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 if we want a friendly little jelly... SCP-999. Okay. SCP-999 is literally just a cute little jelly. It, he just doesn't do anything. He just acts like a dog. Aw. Wait, that's kind of wonderful. I didn't know that there were, like, silly SCPs. Yes, there are a few silly SCPs. So is this just, like, a or like a group of, like, specific writers? Or is this just, like, anyone's open to make an SCP? Yeah, it's like an open thing. Anyone can contribute to the project. That was, or it came up around the same time, I think, as Creepypasta, which was a similar concept mm -hmm. of being like, anyone can contribute to this larger sort of archival work mm -hmm. that all takes place within vaguely the same continuity. Because I know that's been the problem with, like, I know a lot of people have said, like, oh, we would love to see Blank the movie, like, this Creepypasta <laughs> the movie. And the reason why you can't do that is because there's so many people who have contributed to either that particular ip's lore that you need to like track them down and get their permission because they technically own the copyright so i'm curious as to who owns the copyrights for all these things so is it since it's open i mean i'm pretty sure no one really gives a shit about having a movie made about this stuff i remember when the slender man movie came out that was a big deal because it was like oh my god they finally managed to track down the copyright for slender man and they kind of wasted it yeah and they made a dog shit movie out of it yeah I, yeah yeah that kind of sucks ass. Yeah. so i fun fact i saw that movie opening night and i was one of three people in the theater oh and one of the other two people was my buddy who came with me oh <laughs> admittedly like reading a lot of creepy pastas just later in life because I never really got into that stuff when you guys were I was like oh these are really well written these are really really cool like ideas and really cool concepts like but 
again, most of these people just wrote them just for fun. Yeah. Like Smile Dog. Oh my god. I always think about, like, the one that I always come back to is Ben Drowned. That's, like, one of the oh better my... ones. I don't know no, about it, this it, one, actually. Uh, Ben Drowned, basically, do you know The Legend of Zelda game, Majora's Mask? Oh! Okay, never mind. Yeah. Alright, yeah, this is, like, the one where, like, a copy of the game... Is corrupted with the spirit of a dead kid who drowned. Yeah, I did yeah. hear about this one. A lot of internet horror stories kind of followed in the footsteps of this one. Really? Yeah. Yeah, like Sonic.exe was one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Sonic.exe. Who do you think they're going to get to play him in the next movie? Oh, God. That's just, that reeks of like a bad Wreck It Ralph bit to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic.exe appearing in like the crossover film. Jeff there was like a killer. Mario version. Jeff the Killer is a classic. Yeah, we so talked, many. Yeah. Yeah. I know you guys talked about it last year. I just need to comment on the fact that the original Jeff the Killer story or whichever version of it you interpret, because that story's been rewritten a million times, is kind of interesting, but all of the excess lore that was added to it over time has just made it so comedically oversaturated. <laughs> oh God. Juan, what was the spin-off to Jeff the Killer? It was a girl. Like he tried Jane to the kill killer. her. Jane the Killer, yes. Yeah, and she was, like, clearly someone's edgy self-insert who was, like, totally like Jeff the Killer, but better in every way. And also, like, went on hot dates with him. It was great. It was fantastic. It was oh, the peak yeah. of writing. Oh, my God. <laughs> also, Mac, you missed out on the fan fictions about creepypasta. Oh. The horror. The true horror. <laughs> Can we do fan fiction next year for <laughs> Graveyard Oh, yes. my God. Leave it in Just... fan fiction. Just let us do really traumatizing fanfics. <laughs> or, or you also get, like, the really good ones where a pe- person's like, oh, hey, sorry this updates, like, my house burned down. Classic. And it's, like, the best fucking thing you've ever read. Oh, my. But, yeah, no, I just, I always want to bring up Jane the Killer because that was actually what disillusioned me from being into creepypastas. Because my friends would come to school every day and they'd, like, tell me new updates from reading this thing. And I'd be like, really? <laughs> like, even as a fucking, like, 14-year-old, I was like, guys, I don't know. This doesn't seem in line with the canon. <laughs> so, dude, the only reason why I figured out Jane the Killer fucking existed was a fan oh. fiction. Because, <laughs> like, she was on, like, some, like, opposite opposing side to, like, Jeff the Killer. You know how you'd have those fan fictions where it's like everyone lives in Slender Man's mansion? Yeah. What? It was like, oh. Perhaps <laughs> you need to be caught up. There's a lot you've missed. When did Slender Man. Wait, I know he wears like a nice suit. Is he like old money, new money? Like, how did he get a mansion? You're asking know. far too many questions. I don't think no. I am. <laughs> don't poke holes in the story, okay? These are not plot holes. It's just plot. Do not ask questions. There are no holes in this plot. Uh, um, alright. <laughs> but, Max, just so you know, basically, uh, uh, in fan fiction, a lot of the time, Slender Man has, like, these helpers, and then eventually, like, creepypastas just start, vibe, other creepypastas start vibing with him, too, and then they're just living in a mansion. It's like a little reality and, show. It's kind of great. <laughs> yeah, it's like keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> If we're already talking about creepy pastas, we gotta talk about Eilish Jack. Because Eilish Jack is on our list. Oh, yes. Okay, so Eilish Jack, I don't think there was ever like a creation story outside of fan fiction. So you're welcome to sc- scour quotum for that. Creation story. <laughs> yes. Eilish Jack is basically this guy who wears all black <clears throat> and a blue mask with like the eyes are like black, but they're like dripping something. Pretty sure he's not entirely human, but depends on what theory. But basically, he breaks in in the middle of the night, has a scalpel, slices up your open your stomach, and takes your kidneys and eats them. All right. right, and wasn't he like never given a motivation for doing this? Just kind of in it for the love of the game, as far as I can recall. Okay, that's kind of creepy. Oh, so. yeah. It's kind of like the Joker in that, like he has no <laughs> real origin. Shut the fuck up. What? <laughs> So, and everything can't just be like the Joker, Max. I've seen you put on the makeup. Does that mean that you are also kind of like the Joker? Uh, no. I have friends. I found the wiki. Oh, excellent. Um, so, I like that because it's only been a thing since 2010 4chan. Oh my god. 
Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I did not know he came from fucking 4chan. That does not fill me with confidence for what we're about to hear. Uh, do I read just the... What do I read here? Uh, you can scroll down to Origin. That's where I'm slowly trying to read. I like how there goes, canon, non-canon. <laughs> it's like the... Oh, it's... shit. He is like the Joker. He's played by Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. The origin of Eyeless Jack. All right. <laughs> now this has just become audible. At the age oh of 19, God. a college student from Alberta named Jack Nyris was once a normal human of Canadian origin. That ain't human. Uh, before he was used by a cult as a human sacrifice, which involves removal of his eyes and a liquid mixture of hot tar and blood being poured into his sockets. The sacrifice failed. What? Okay. However, <laughs> resulting in the rituals accidentally turning Jack into the eldritch kidney-eating monster that he is now. So, wait, wait, wait. Something's not adding up here. What? How, how, do, how, how do, do you fail the human sacrifice someone? Yeah. Like, oh no, it's they like live. the easiest shit. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Emily, 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 Emily. <laughs> Jennifer's body. That's how you fail a human sacrifice. Okay, fair point. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's right below the non canon is like the original story. Right. In the but... original story in a forest near <sighs> Saskatchewan, Manitoba border. Thank you. A twenty three year old man named Mitch moves in with his brother Edwin. Man, you can really tell this was written on Fortune. Uh after his <laughs> house is foreclosed. A week later, Mitch wakes up with a large gash on his cheek. After going to the hospital, the doctor reveals that Mitch's left kidney has been surgically removed overnight. Around midnight that night, Mitch wakes to see Eyeless Jack over his bed wearing a blue mask with black liquid dripping from the empty eye sockets behind the mask. Wait, wait how can you? All right, never mind. Which Mitch was terrified at first and managed to grab his camera and take a picture before Jack attacks. Clawing at his chest, Mitch escapes and flees into the woods where he trips and is knocked unconscious. When Mitch awakens in the hospital, it is revealed to him that Edwin had been killed in the, the previous night. His parents drive him to the house to collect his belongings. When he enters, Mitch sees Edwin's corpse and a small object lying next to it. He observes it to find that it is his kidney with a bite taken out of it, covered in black substance. However, Edwin's corpse was buried a few days after the attack that night. Yep. Eilish Jack, buddy. Not gonna lie, kind of a little disappointed. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know, I feel like when you just give me the synopsis, we're like, oh, he just steals your kidneys. I don't know, it just doesn't seem that scary. Alright, yeah, we can move on okay. from this. I, I'm done with Eilish Jack. Fuck Eilish Jack. You're just mad because his movies are better than yours. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Fair. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Fuck you too. But unfortunately, Max, you're gonna be stuck on the on the creepy pasta train. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna talk about. There are some creepy pastas that I liked because I think the most interesting to me, at least back in the day, the creepy pastas that I enjoyed the most were the ones that were like realistic enough, where it's like, oh damn, this could actually happen, and that was kind of like freaky. Like there was one that I remember that fucked me up as a kid, um, and it has permanently changed my behavioral process. Uh, I could literally look at the way that I live my life right now, visually, uh, as a result of the story. There was a creepypasta my friend recounted to me about this kid who, like, stays up every night watching, like, thunderstorms outside of his uh, his window, like the lightning flashes. And he's like, wow, that's really cool. And uh, every morning he tells his dad about it. And his dad's like, damn, that's crazy, child. Uh, I There are no, there's not been a thunderstorm for, like, a week, so what are you watching? And then the dad, like, stays in the kid's room one night and uh, it turns out that there's just, like, a guy with a camera outside of the kid's window who's just been, like, standing there photographing him. Oh, fuck. Yeah, um, and then I think the night the dad was staying in there, it was coming from the closet. Like, the guy had broken in. Yes. But that shit scarred me for life as, like, a, like a, a middle schooler. So, uh, fun fact, I never leave my blinds open, uh, ever. They're closed as we speak right now, and it is entirely because of that creepy pasta. No, that's and, fair. It's just an, an ingrained habit. Same. <laughs> that's fair. Like, that... I, I cannot, I can never have my blinds open. As I'm yeah. saying, like, there's just some really well written stories. 
Yeah, like, and then there's like Eyeless Jack. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> or the Rake. Oh, oh yeah, you want to talk about that? I don't know much about the Rake. Okay. You've probably seen like some things about the Rake, like the oh. weird, creepy ass pictures. Basically, the Rake is some sort of entity that's like t- really tall, thin, gray, and has like claws for hands. And it just sits on the edge of your bed. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, it fucking kills you. All right. I feel like I've seen that design in so many things that it's just not scary to me anymore. That's fair. But you have to remember, it was novel when that creepypasta first came out. Fair. I don't know. Like, it it looks kind of like the Russian sleep experiment creature. One of the images that you sent me kind of looks like the imp from Doom. (laughs) <laughs> oh i just i thought of a segue hang on i thought of i thought of a way to connect to something non-creepypasta related uh because another fun iconic creepypasta um was uh candle cove i've heard I of recall. this oh, yes yeah um it's and this may sound familiar to any of you who have watched uh, a particular recent film but it was about uh an old tv show uh, that got lost to time and people rediscovered it and fucky shit started happening because it didn't necessarily line up with their memories uh, and it turned out to be like cursed or whatever mm-hmm. um, fun little connecting fact another uh, iconic internet horror franchise uh, Local 58 uh, was actually originated by Candle Cove because that was the name of the station uh, on which the fictional Candle Cove show originally aired in that first story Oh. And so when Local 58 was being created, it was actually in reference to the original Candle Cove creepypasta. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Candle Cove is a creepy creepypasta. Yeah, it's unsettling. <laughs> it's one of the more like, oh, you know, a lot of them you go back to and it's like, this was scary when I was a teenager, but it's like fine now. Candle Cove still kind of freaks me out. That one's... I don't, yeah, I don't know. Especially because, like, we're getting to the point where there's probably TV shows as kids that we watched that, like, we kind of fuzzily remember, but yeah. not really. And this plays into that. So it's just like, oof. But that's, that's part of why Candle Cove is so effectively creepy, is because it's like, I feel like it's pretty common, especially for people of our generation, to have these shows that you, like, sort of remember. <laughs> But I feel like that'll probably be lost on like the the, the skibbity generation as they were, yeah. um, who probably didn't grow up with live television being as much of a thing in their household. Yeah, where you had to like wait for the show that you liked, so you had to catch shows. They were like, "What's this?" Yeah, yeah, I remember that as a kid. Like, yeah, but, but now everything's on demand. Yep. Not to to turn this into nostalgia ranting, but I do think it's it's interesting to look at Candle Cove as specifically such a, like a generational sort of scary story because it's so specifically tuned to like people our age and a little bit older Mm -hmm. yeah like i don't think you would get the same effect for like in like say like when the skibbity generation is a little bit older and they start writing their own stuff like i don't think it's gonna be the same effect of like seeing a something on like netflix and just it's gone now and you're like what the hell happened to that thing i don't know i just think that's really interesting i'm glad you brought it up but uh uh, I would like to keep it moving a bit. Keeping it in line with uh, creepy pastas, but also shows, would be Marble Hornets. Marble Hornets is basically, and it's like 17 years old now. Like, it's fucking old. <laughs> but it's basically a series on YouTube, and it's sort of like sound footage, vlog thing. And most videos weren't longer than five minutes. Mm-hmm. But it's like a delve into like, this guy trying to find one of his friends who went missing he's slowly going insane turns out the friend is insane and it's a killer now and you want to know why they went insane hmm. slender man slender man because <laughs> i think i mentioned it earlier how slender man sometimes uh is portrayed with helpers oh my god emily do you remember hoodie and masky oh yeah oh my god <laughs> this is where they come from interesting so yeah. it's it's fascinating because there are a lot of these like series like online series that are sort of slender man related but the one i i always heard about was everyman hybrid uh it's fascinating because this was like marble hornets hornets was a really interesting thing because it's one of those works that just takes slender man and puts him in something that isn't like all about him yeah like he's in the background like you'll catch him in the background of the 
pictures or like he won't be pointed out unless either you go back and look for him or later on in some of the footage they look back and see him which is an interesting concept of being like we're gonna do a creepypasta that's technically connected to slender man but he's kind of like a background i think this is a cool idea only marred by the fact that the idea of slender man helpers has kind of been controversial in real life yeah i was gonna yeah. say this did kind of contribute to the whole some people definitely got stabbed a little bit yeah like um, well more more than a little bit to a detrimental degree yeah luckily they did survive when i look back on the slender man like legacy and stuff like that it is also this big issue of like hey people went a little too far with this and treated it as if it was real yeah and it's one of the instances where like like people on like ultra right wing areas of YouTube said like oh internet like what we watch affects us and makes us do violent things like this is the only time I've been like well that did happen <laughs> yeah but I would argue that that sort of came at least to some extent from the age demographic which was reading these stories which really shouldn't have been that's true yeah, yeah and then right? also the raising of said kids. Yeah. Because they want to differentiate from fiction to real life. Like Yeah, the problem with having like iPad kids, they don't understand fiction from nonfiction. That is the, one of the things when it comes to like these Slender Man helpers where I'm like, that's a cool story and all, but I'm like, I, I just can't help but think about like someone actually did this. <laughs> right. So okay. Just to just to give you a, a thought experiment here. Alright. Um Taxi Driver, I think, is still generally considered a good movie. Fair. <laughs> by most people. And John Hinckley did attempt a very real presidential assassination on the basis that he thought the woman from that movie would give him a blowjob because he had watched it and was severely mentally ill and was influenced by that movie to do that. So what is, in your view, the essential difference between why we can still look at Taxi Driver as a good movie but have to feel reserved about certain works of art on the internet? That's fair. I didn't think... I Well, one, never heard about that actually happening. Um, <laughs> and yeah, no, you kind of got... You caught me there. I... I guess when it comes to, like, Taxi Driver, I will say, that is a movie, like, critiquing that type of person. Whereas, yeah, like, these stories of the Slenderman helpers and Slenderman are made to just be scary and creepy and not be, like, a critique on those people. Like, I don't think you're gonna get, like, a full-on Taxi Driver-esque movie about fucking one of these Marble Hornets or the hoodie or whatever the hell, Chris, you were saying earlier. And masky, yeah. yeah, I don't think you're gonna get like a deep dive into their lives of them like looking in the mirror. I don't think that it's necessarily the responsibility of art to stop people from doing dumb shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you guys. know what? Yeah, that is, I will give you that. That is not the responsibility of someone making a piece of work. I just, I just can't yeah. help but think like. You also have the people who argue video games make people more violent. It's sort of a similar argument. It's just like, mm. I'm not saying that I agree with, like, the pieces of media make people violent. I'm just saying, like, this is the only time I've ever seen something that was, like, that's the only exception. Yeah, and I think that's fair. I just think it's interesting to wonder about why we look at stuff that was designed for the internet versus stuff that was designed in other ways. Because, like, another example that I'll bring up was uh, Nine Inch Nails, that um, album, Downward Spiral, uh, was heavily associated with the uh, the Columbine Massacre because they the kids who did that, like, had it on vinyl and there was a whole moral panic at the time about like Nine Inch Nails was like corrupting people and causing them to do violence. But we don't think of Nine Inch Nails in that way necessarily as a whole. No. Right. Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. look at it. Right. And that's that's what I'm saying is it's like I, I get the, the the sort of internal reservation about Slenderman stuff. I mean, I feel it, too. Right. Like it's, it's not just a, a single person's thing. But I think it's interesting to question why we feel that way about this as opposed to other stuff with similar associations. Mm hmm. Because I don't necessarily think it's that different. I think people who were going to do those things would have found one reason or another to do that. Oh, yeah. You know what? That is 100% true. I think, like, it is always just an excuse. I'm just saying, like, when it came to, like, the Slenderman stabbings, they are known as the Slenderman stabbings. Because yeah. those girls did it as almost a religious sacrificial thing. Those were caused because these girls believed in this thing that they believe to exist which honestly kind of makes it go back to more of the religious horror if you really think about it yeah and just the fact that a lot of content on the internet is unmoderated right like people 
are accessing things that it's like i wouldn't argue that slender man was necessarily designed for people of that Not age at all that. exactly it was when i was slowly starting to get into like internet stuff slender man was that thing where it was just like oh this is kind of like taboo for me to listen to because like like it was scary it was like stuff made for people older than me and talking about really creepy things i don't know it's kind of like the the same thing of like watching an r-rated movie when you're like yeah this is why you monitor your kids internet usage folks <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah no 100 percent. and it's it's interesting because i mean look at the way that you phrase that right an r-rated movie because we literally have content classifications for movies and for other media about what the appropriate age demographic is for looking at that consuming that kind of stuff and we just don't have any equivalency for stuff in online spaces and i think that's the thing it's like a parent can look at i don't know fucking halo 4 and be like this is rated m i should consider whether or not to let my child play this without further research Mm -hmm. or they can look at a movie and be like that's rated r i don't know if that's appropriate for my child Mm -hmm. but when you're in the sort of wild west of the creepypasta wiki you're kind of in this situation where it's like well i just don't know whether or not this is appropriate because my kid comes up to me and is like hey i was looking at a slender man i'm gonna be like just a skinny dude (laughs) With without the knowing, like tracking twenty four seven, what your kids are looking at, you a lot of the time you just aren't going to know what this stuff is, and the lack of moderation around it means that it's more likely that kids who are going to have an adverse reaction to it or who aren't, you know, mature enough for that content are going to access it. And I think that if we're going to moralize about the Slenderman stabbings and that kind of stuff, I think that that's the the direction to look is just the fact that we don't have that sort of classification and we don't have that sort of moderation that other forms of media have which is why you don't see freddy krueger stabbings no yeah you make a great point and yeah i will concede i I didn't think of it like that of just yeah you comparing it to like a wild west is like yeah like the internet is literally the void it is vast and like you look into it and you don't know what back at you i kind of want to keep the overall uh, discussion of different kinds of just internet horror going like uh I think the last one I would like to discuss, because this is the one I kind of did a little bit of research on, because I know that, Emily, you were the one that was like, hell yeah, we should talk about that, was a yeah. Mandela catalog. Uh, yeah, Mandela catalog is fucking awesome. It plays on what I think is one of the scariest concepts that horror can do, which is like body snatching, like uh, doppelganger shit. That freaks the fuck out yeah. of me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh, okay. No, I, I, I don't know what it is, but like the just people who like Uncanny Valley look close enough to people, but there are like subtly things that are subtly wrong. That gives me the fucking heebie jeebies. I do not care for that at all. Uh, which is why Mandel Catalog is really good because it's all that. Yeah, I did a little bit of research on it. Like, oh, this is actually really creepy. Like, it's got, I like the ideas of like kind of like the classification of each different, uh, I think it was like Doppelganger uh fuck i forgot the name of the others i did this was like really quick research but the one thing i couldn't help but think of the entire time listening to it and watching some of it was this is jordan peele's us yeah it's very similar like i couldn't help but think of that i was like this is literally the idea of what us was just your doppelganger coming in killing you and i don't i didn't get too far of what they do afterwards but like I remember in, uh, with us, it was just like Hands Across America. And I couldn't help but think, like, when did which one come out? Like, I imagine, like, Mandela Catalog came out way before us did. Um, I can uh, it was look... just released 2021. So that would be after us, which was 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I mean, I'm not saying, like, yeah. one is copying off the other. I'm just saying, like, it's just interesting how similar in concept and a little bit of execution they are. It's just that Mandela catalog has more of the internet horror analog horror analog yeah, yeah analog horror kind of sensibilities whereas like us yeah. is definitely more Hollywood horror film but yeah no I think Mandela catalog despite being similar to us I think it has a lot of its own really cool ideas and the thing that I will shout out about it is that it has a very unique sort of form factor the issue that I have with a lot of, of analog horror stuff that kind of bothers me is sometimes it can feel very monotonous when it's like, I don't know, the fucking Five Night Freddy's files where it's like training videos unearthed from Five Night Freddy restaurant. Um, and it's all that same sort of like form factor of like, you can expect this, this, and this in this video 
all of the Mandela catalog videos feel like different, almost experiments in like how we're going to go about doing this concept. Mm -hmm. Like there's one that's like a fucking short film where two guys like go into this house and it's all done through like still shots of security cameras. There's the like, we're going to do a weird spliced up Bible animation. And I think the variety really adds something to it. Hmm. Okay. It really feels like a catalog of different ways to deal with the thing you not believe. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's really cool. And to be fair, a lot of my information is because I had to look it up really quick just for this review or this video was I looked up a lot of it on Wendigoon. Ah. Yeah. So a lot of my information comes from that as well. So a lot of it was kind of explained to me what was going on. So I was like, okay, I can kind of follow what this is in a really quick fashion. I don't know. A lot of these analog horror things kind of remind me of that one movie that came out, I believe last year, Skinnamarink. Oh yeah. I didn't watch that. I, but I heard it was really good. I heard it was good too. I just heard the plot and what it was about. And I was just like, I can't watch this. <laughs> I will lose. I will lose interest or I just need to be in the right mood to like be creeped out. But from what I have seen about it, it is kind of, it is scary in that yeah. analog horror way. I just can't imagine sitting in a theater watching that. Yeah. That's a commitment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would be. do you know what Skinnamarink is? It sounds familiar, but I thought you were saying for a second that like doing the Mandela catalog in like a fucking movie theater. Yeah, it's Ugh. it's it's kind of like that in like the analog sense of like it's just a lot of really static imagery, not a lot of move movement going on. Like the plot of like Skinner Rink was that there's these two kids that are left alone at night because of something going on with their mom and their dad, and they're just left alone in this house. And suddenly all the windows and doors are start to disappear throughout the house. Oh, God. So, yeah, it's a very creepy idea and very, very analog horror. And I will not, I will, I'm going to quote Chris Stuckman, and I think he nailed it right with this, where he said, this movie is the best we're ever going to get at adapting internet horror to the big screen. Again, that analog horror style of, like, there's no real characters you don't really see what's going on most of the time. It's just mostly shots of just like walls and toys on the ground. Like the most, the most infamous thing from that movie is the, the phone toy. Oh, oh. yeah. That, that thing. Yeah. That thing. And when the lights go off, it's just like two eyes in the darkness. And when you turn it on, it's this, it's the, it's the call. It's the phone from toy story. <laughs> like that film nailed the internet horror vibe and i think that is in itself a monumental achievement i don't know yeah it's not easy to do no yeah um, i guess two things i would like to talk about before we end this episode off is there's like two internet mysteries i know we talked a lot about internet mysteries last year but i kind of want to talk about a couple this year which one do you guys want to hear about first do you want to hear about i feel fantastic or the most mysterious song on the internet I've heard of both of these already. Well, uh, no, I haven't heard, heard of either. Song one. I, I've heard of I Feel Fantastic. That is a weird fucking video. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'll end off with I Feel Fantastic. But the most mysterious song on the internet is pretty much this song that just appeared on, I believe, Reddit, where someone was just like, hey, does anybody know the name of the song? It appeared once on this radio, and I can't find who wrote this song. And since. No one's claimed it. I can actually play parts of the song. So here you go. That's what the song sounds like. It's very new wave. It sounds a little bit like Joy Division. It's I can say this. It's so generic that no one can find who originally made it. And that's what's creepy about it is that like it's just this thing that appeared out of nowhere. And no one has claimed to it. And various Reddit 
like detectives, if you will, have yeah. been trying to figure out who made this song. And the close we have gotten is uh okay, it's this band called Statues in Motion. It was this eighties Greek band that made a lot of different songs like this. They are they are the most possible person to have made this song. One, because if you listen to some of their other songs, which I can't play, sound a lot like the song that was here. Problem is, is the guy that most of the people are in contact with doesn't really remember if he did or not. Because keep in mind, like, this is this was a song in the 80s, and it's now being discovered. <laughs> so he's like, I don't even remember. <laughs> So it's, it's this real. I just like the idea of like the like media that just came out of nowhere. I think that's really cool. Um, again, if it were like a creepier song, it'd, it'd be scarier to like talk about. Like, what the hell is this? But since it's like this really generic new wave eighty song, it's really hard to be like, like what is this? <laughs> the other one I want to talk about is "I Feel Fantastic," and it is probably the internet video that blew up like with like what the fuck is this yeah like this is unsettling as fuck it was also fun fact featured in an episode of smiling friends for i did i (laughs) did see that i was like what the fuck and i think that is hilarious but in that they kind of make it scarier on purpose whereas like the fun or fun in quotations about watching that original video is like is this meant to be creepy because it is but it feels like there's in some way this was unintentional. Yeah. Where it's, it's, just, a, it's weird. It is. It's just bizarre. The cuts to the outside make no sense. The look of the thing is creepy yeah. as all hell. The sounds it makes is crazy. But I don't want to ruin the horror for you. They have found out what the original con- the context of it is. Really? I actually want to know that. Okay. Yeah, I want to know now. So what it is, I don't remember the name of the specific guy name here on the in the video, but it was a guy, I believe in like the early like internet 1.0, where before YouTube, before a lot of these internet forums, there was this guy who was working on robotics. And he was basically saying, like, hey, I wanna make Androids a household thing. That's not the way you do it. No, yeah, he was yeah. just like just as like the Mac Macintosh is being in everybody's home now and the computers is going to be like just an average thing. I want to do the same for androids. He's, he's developing a robot that will be able to be used at, in like haunts, theme parks in your house. If you want to talk to someone, just various things. And if you look at the images he would send, it is straight up that Android and it's named Tara, the Android gross. That and... none, of, none of this is less creepy. This is just weird, and I feel like this person is, like, low-key a freak. But it, the idea was to <laughs> just make an android that would be, like, a household thing. But the thing is, even in his original notes, he has stated, this android can't do shit. <laughs> like... It literally just sits there? Yeah, it can't do anything. He says, I don't have enough money to make it walk. Because I don't have the time or the budget to make it be able to balance itself to walk. So it can only stand there. I can either sell you the bust or I can just sell you the sk- the thing without skin. And you can study it and work on it yourself. And just sell you basically the Terminator skull, pretty much. Yeah, this guy is not beating the weirdo allegations. Sorry to say it. No, yeah. And so then he made this video. He made other videos too, which are perhaps even creepier than the original one i don't even want to know like one of them is like it's the thing with black hair and it's 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 like in an upward dog position where like it's it's being balanced on its hands and kind of like lifting itself up but its legs are just like not working so it kind of looks like a zombie rising from the grave kind of thing and it's unsettling because keep in mind it's all shot the same way tripod in just full room. And I think the funniest comment I've ever seen, and I can't give credit to it because I don't remember the name, but I will just say it's not my own thought, is that what's creepy about it is the room that it's filmed in. 100%. Where, like, if it were, like, a lab, you can kind of make the idea of, like, okay, this is, like, test footage. It's creepy, 
But you're under the idea of like this is a test footage. Not it's sitting in your in your house. What also is very creepy like is the fact that like in just like a design of the house thing, there's like three windows in a corner and it's just forest. <laughs> So, like, he just looks me out no, into the darkness. Me, no, likey. Yeah, and, like, yeah. then there's, and I love and the internet theories about what this thing was, of, like, this was either this guy's wife that he, this is all theories, and they were not, they're probably not true, but, like, I remember one story was, like, this is uh the guy's wife that he's trying to make, like, a, a mural for. One I saw was this was the close of a victim this guy killed and when you cut to the outside and you see the little bo- little hump in the ground that's where he buried the body gross like there was this Ugh. thing blew up <laughs> and like again yes yeah, smiling friends made a thing about it but yeah um, I wanted to talk about those um internet mysteries that were kind of solved one is just like some greek band and the other one was just some guy who just did not understand social cues <laughs> Did not understand social cues, did not realize, hey, everything that's put on the internet's gonna stay. Yeah. Definitely was fucking that robot. Like, I feel 100% confident. There have (laughs) been some posts. Yeah, you might have. Because there are some posts that were like, hold on, where did this come from? (laughs) Why are you not talking about it being sexy? No, I, I, as soon as I saw that video, I was like, man, this is, this is weird fetish shit, 100%. Oh, yeah, it definitely comes across as that, like. Yeah. It's just also, like, if you were to be selling that, it's like, hey, this is gonna be inside everybody's house. Get a PR guy. (laughs) Make it a little more, like, eye appealing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, burn it. (laughs) Kill it. Be like, I've, I've created a monster. (laughs) I don't know, but, like, yeah, I wanted to end it off there, because it is definitely one of those, like, internet creepy... It's not a creepy pasta, but it's definitely one of those things where it's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Just creepy stuff from the old internet. Yeah. Nothing much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you guys have any other quick little creepy things on the internet if you ever want to talk about. Uh, Matt, I think do. you're missing the very uh, last person on our uh, list. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, I want to point out, we did, I did not put this on my list. This is old Miko, friend of the show. He's been on a couple episodes. He wanted me to talk about Nikocado Avocado. <laughs> he was always two steps ahead. I know, but is that really internet horror or just like, good for him? Well, no, because he keeps posting videos. We don't know if he's skinny or fat right now. I I, I don't know. I just... Unsolved internet mystery. <laughs> Yeah. Oh god, are we going to talk about, are, are we going to become sort of an unsolved? Oh, no, no, we're not going to media unsolved. No, we're not going to sell a bullshit streaming service to people. Aww, <laughs> there goes my monetization plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, I think we're going to end this off. I had a lot of fun talking about this stuff. Can we do like horror, internet horror like ARGs next year? Sure, if we want to do a part three to this, yeah. You should, you should do that. There are some good ones. All right, well, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed us just kind of shooting the shit, talking about some creepy stuff from the internet. You guys want to say your names real quick before we end this off? Sure. I'm I'm Emily. You can uh, find me on other episodes of the show. And I'm Chris. You can also find me on some other episodes and stuff. Uh, definitely subscribe to the Patreon because the uncut for our Halloween special is going to be up there. And then also... Some of the more uncut stuff that like gets a little spicy. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Max, you, you were the one who made Million Dollar Media after Dark a thing. You have to live with it now. Especially after the hentai special, Max. I know. That's true internet horror right there. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Pornography? Are yeah. you scared of boobs? <laughs> I, yeah. Women terrify me. But... That would be a great. That would be a great um, graveyard shift episode. <laughs> Internet horror part three: women. <laughs> it's just like movies that Amy Schumer has started in the last five years. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Hope you have a good day. Keep listening to more graveyard shift. <laughs>